Is this thing live, Tanish? Testing, ah, testing, testing. My ears were live. Go on. <clears throat> People of Ireland, today it is my solemn duty to give you all a state of the nation address. Yes. And like address, our good nation has been wearing a guna that is at least three sizes too small. What? A dress that is ill-fitting and inappropriate in these difficult times. <sighs> you take it from me. Ill-fitting clothes give no pleasure to the wearer or those looking on. Oh, God. I know things are tight. Stocks are going up and down. Oh. Necklines are plunging, God. leaving us all a little bit too exposed. God. What we need now are spanks to protect our bottom line. A supportive presence, keeping a tight rein on unsightly excesses, yet allowing us to breathe. Oh. But I do hear you, dear people, that you want a head on a plate. Yes. You want to know who is to blame for this mess we are in. Exactly. Well, I can tell you now, oh. it is <laughs> the Pope. Oh. Jesus. Yes, the Pope abused our banks, oh. interfered with our economy, oh. and molested our pension schemes. Oh. And that people of Ireland oh. is the best I can come up with. Tishuk, what? I thought you were going to stick it to Shani and, and, and fingers for goodness no, sake. No, it was the Pope, Gilbor. What? And fingers crossed that excuse will do the trick for us. <laughs> oh, right. And in fairness, Shani crossed that too for that matter. <laughs> <sighs> I really wish your lot had backed Bruton. This thing is not still on, Gilbor, is it? Oh, fuck. Ireland, Era, the Emerald Isle, the little country that keeps on giving, even when everybody else is on the take. This week, the Prime Minister of Greece threatened to leave the EU because they wanted to give him 8 billion euro. Eamon Dunphy walked out of snooze talk because Dennis O'Brien took 50 grand from him. And Thishuk Ender paid 700 million euro to Anglo bondholders and then found 3.6 billion he didn't know he had. It's a funny old world. Welcome to Green Tea. I once applied to go on Mastermind, but the morals of Katie Price were not allowed as a specialist subject. Hello and welcome to Mastermind. May we have our first contestant, please? Yeah. Name? Tis Baldy Nonan. Occupation? The person in charge of adding up at the Department of Finance. Specialist subject? Adding up at the Department of Finance. You have 30 seconds, starting now. One and one. A pass. One and two. A pass. One and three. Mm, uh, pass. One and four. Oh, a uh, pass. 3.6 billion euro minus 3.6 billion euro. Three, 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 at uh, uh, 3.6 billion euros. How did I do? You passed on five. The answers were two, three, four, five and zero. But listen, do I get to continue the job? You certainly do. And a pension to die for, a lump sum, a pay increase, huh. lots of days off. Right. Just like you lot an RT, so merry. O-M-F-G. Oh, yeah. Who wants to be a millionaire? Well, not Dennis O'Brien. You see, he's a billionaire. Uh, hello, this is Eamon Dunphy, and this is my uh, final broadcast for Communicorps and Snooze Talk, or Blackrock Radio, as the public calls it. Uh, as this is my last show, I'm going to open it up to the public. Um, who's on the line? Uh, line one there, go ahead, caller, identify yourself. Hi, it's Dennis from Barbados. And what's on your mind, Dennis? Well, recently, Eamon, I've been having problems with some of my jocks. Well, then, Dennis, yeah. you might consider uh, maybe stop buying those cheap, useless yellow pack jocks. No, these are my big, expensive jocks, Eamon. Huge money. Uh, any type of boxes? No, but I do have a former footballer of sorts. <clears throat> so called. Uh, I haven't a Bacardi Breezer what you're on about, but uh, if you can just get to the point, because this is my, my last yeah. and very precious broadcast uh, on Snooze Talk. Right, it's it's Dennis here, oh. your boss. Uh, you're not my boss anymore, Brian. You're a bitter, <laughs> you're a bitter man, although <laughs> I'm quite uh, fond of the bitter myself. <laughs> Look, Eamon, all uh, I wanted you to yeah. do was to take a half cut off uh, the contract. Wait, and you hang on a second. Half cut? Are you saying that I'm half cut? No. How dare you? I, I may have had a few with my old mucker, Sam Smith over breakfast. Amen. But how dare you say that I'm half cut? You're I, not fit to lace my booze, O'Brien. Booze? You hate that, journalism. No, well, you'll see. RG will pay me big again, baby. RG. I'm out of here. I don't need your stupid it, station. This is ridiculous. I'm leaving. Eamon? As soon it, as I can find the, the door. Oh, dear. Where's the second door? 
gay rights campaigner, a former pop star and a former IRA commander were among the candidates for the presidency of Ireland. No, that's not a joke. That actually happened. Let's check in on Orison Uthroin. <laughs> now there, there, Mr. Vice President, you must be feeling sleepy by now. It's President, and read me the last part of the story, Mr. Vice President, or what use are you anyway? It's President? <laughs> oh, okay, but this is the last time. It's what? way past your bedtime. But it's only nine o'clock, for goodness sake. Yes, but you need your beauty sleep. Now. Just read it. <laughs> And then declaiming the ancient Greek proverb, yes. the Greek god Thalia, which means blossom, by the way, Mr. Vice President. It's president! I don't know what it means. Thalia heralded a new world, and reaching to the sky roared, uh. Remember, he who turns his back on a Greek will get it in the end. Uh, oh. yes. I don't love that ending, Mr. Vice President. <laughs> it's president, you old fool. Do you think I should include the quote in my inauguration speech next what? Friday? Our inauguration speech. What? He who turns his back on a Greek will get it in the end. Yes. Mm. yes. But is this a homophobic reference, Michael Tweed? Not this philosopher is obviously a filthy demon. My Labour Heartland would be furious. Yeah. Uh, not to mention the Irish Times. <laughs> but no one can hear us now, my dear Mr. Vice President. Yeah. It's just you and I. Mm. We're together in private at last. <laughs> alone with the magnificent Seamus Heaney Feather down duvet. Rest now, my sweet. Rest. Yeah. Oh, where's my box? Goodness. Where's my box? Mr. Vice President, it's here. Your box is here. It's safe now. It's safe for your speech next week. Yeah. Now, hush. It's president. Sleep now. If anything should ever happen to you, I'll be here ready and waiting. Ready to step into your little shoes. Minister for Public Expenditure and Reform is Brendan Howland. You know, he could set up a bingo website to recoup the money he lost on running two referenda. Hmm. This is the News at One on Radio One. I'm Sean O'Rourke. Good afternoon. Now to discuss the government's humiliating defeat in the referendum on Oireachtas inquiries, I'm joined by the Minister for Public Expenditure and Reform, Brendan Howland. Good afternoon, Minister. Well, Sean, first of all, I want to apologise to... Uh, for criticising the Referendum Commission, is it? No, no, for bringing forward this referendum at all. Really, Minister? Well, I'm sorry. I'm so very... Very sorry. For misreading the public mind, no doubt. No, well, at for wanting to give TDs and senators something to do all day long. Now, hang on a second here, I'm Minister. I'm sorry from the bottom of my heart. Surely you're overreacting <laughs> just ever so slightly, Minister. For being Minist Minister for the Environment? <sighs> I'm sorry. So very sorry for being a TD for Wexford. Really? Who has yeah. moan when you need her? Well, this is absolutely extraordinary. And I'm I sorry for being a little wimp. Incredible. I'm sorry for being even smaller than Michael Tweeg. Unbelievable. I'm sorry for being Brendan Howler. <sighs> <laughs> okay, Sorry. well, d just get yourself together, Minister, will you? For goodness sake, all I wanted was to have a good row with the man. Good afternoon. Don't knock the weather. If it didn't change once in a while, nine out of ten people in Ireland couldn't even start a conversation. Here's Jean Byrne with more good news. Well, we didn't quite get the warm temperatures right last week, so I hope the children weren't too disappointed if they followed our advice and got their toboggans down from the attic. Well, this week we can be absolutely sure that our forecast is spot on. We know for certain there'll be snow in places, largely in the north and south pole areas and possibly on top of the Himalayas. There'll be heavy rain and uh, rain forests and we can expect long sunny spells and, well, Sahara Desert. Here at home we think it will be a little more mixed and unsettled, though I have to admit I was never really sure what mixed and unsettled meant other than we haven't got the foggiest. <coughs> Which is not to suggest it will be foggy or anything. Good afternoon from Wet Erin. We 
we're back on the by-roads of Ireland where the soldiers of despair are looking for directions. Going forward. Going backwards. Get the set nav walking here. At the next crossroads, uh, turn right, uh, then left, uh, then go straight ahead to the nearest pub. Here, uh, <laughs> for God's sake, of a heel, can you not get rid of that useless yo? As a matter of fact, I've got a new sat-nav program. Have we not used it before? No, it says in the box that there's no previous links to Fianna Fáil going forward. That's exactly what we need, a clean break from the past with new vision. Smile. Uh. Stare straight ahead and say as little as possible, Ooh. and I will lead you to the youth uh, vote. Uh, this could be just what we need, O'Quiva, uh, going forward. Uh, a fresh stash. In precisely two seconds, oh. you will become a successful entrepreneur. What, what, what did he say? Uh, something about fresh air, O'Quiva? Uh, or was it hot air? I can't make it out. He's leading us astray. Last again, we need to rediscover the farming vote. In less <laughs> than one second, you will become a struggling small farmer on 20 acres of land oh. that you bought with your own money. Uh, yeah, or maybe with a little bit of help from your Ulfala. I know he just made a balls of it so close to the finish line. Going uh, backwards. It's, it's, it's absolutely useless. Let me key in our final destination. To reach your final stop, uh, first collect a check for five grand from a convicted uh, fuel smuggler. Oh no. Then organize a big lick arse dinner in the Claren Hotel Michal. before delivering a photo of Brian Cowan to his house. Oh, this is worse than ever. Heard on the left, over the hill here. Over the hill? Oh no, where the hell are we now? I, 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 I think he's led us into a dead end, O'Queen. Oh no! Oh, it's a Provo ambush! Oh. He's led us straight into a Provo ambush! Oh. We were surrounded by brown envelopes! Going backwards! Oh. Oh. We're losing! Control. Mission control over. This is mission control going hard. Targeting gates, mission complete. Well done, Martin. You may have been a lousy candidate, but you still know how to take people out. Roger that. Operation envelope complete. Over and out. All right, let's. Are we still in the area? Yeah? All right, ready for the pets blend intro? Uh, action. Down under, they say Aussie rules. But in this part of the world, we say. Kerry rules, and no compromise thereby, as Kevin McStay gets cleaned out. <laughs> Look at all due respect, mate, but this ain't working. Huh? Aussies aren't interested in your compromise rules from Ireland. Well, that's a negative view. I think it's fine. I think we just need to add one or two ingredients and it'll take off. That's for sure. Funny you should say that. I had an idea on that front. Yes, more points for a goal, maybe, or an extra point for a behind. Well, that's it. I'm glad you raised behinds. Right. What I was thinking was this. Every time someone gets a go, yep. we get a load of naked Sheilas to run around the pitch. Naked Sheilas? Well, the trip switch has gone off. That's my view. Naked Bridget's, naked Deirdre's, whatever. I ain't fussy, mate. Huh? But if you want some Aussie men to pay in, they won't pay in to see that crap. No. Naked ladies. Huh. That's your answer, mate. Lord above, what would Archbishop Croke say? He'd say, huh. hey, what? look at all the naked ladies running around the pitch. Devil Air will be spinning in his grave, no doubt about it. No, he won't. He'll be getting out of his grave. What? To look at all the naked ladies. Look, I think we'll just give up the whole thing as a bad job. Go home and play proper Gaelic football. Suit yourself, mate. It's my view. But there's one element of this whole compromise thing we might keep, if that's all right. And what element would that be now? The naked ladies. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is unfucking believable. Crow Park is gonna kill me, that's for sure. Good afternoon, this is Yesterday FM News with Ben Dover. The tall and extremely handsome Dennis O'Brien has denied having any influence on the content of news bulletins on radio stations in his control. Mr. O'Brien, a fine rugby player in his day, said he never interfered with the independence of the news of his highly successful and very entertaining radio stations. The humble and generous Mr. O'Brien, of whom it is said is excellent company at dinner parties, said he took such allegations very seriously. And that's all the news for now. Next on Yesterday FM, it's Leave It to Mr. O'Brien, followed by O'Brien on Song, The O'Brien Show, and later with Dennis O'Brien. Good afternoon. It's year three of the German occupation. High up in a secret attic in Merrion Street, our brave cabinet has been hiding away from the occupiers. Diary of little Leo. 36 months and two weeks there. Huh? Uh, uh, doesn't that look lovely, everyone? Oh, for God's sake, Veruca, will you stop moping over that diary of yours there in the corner? Useless. Uh, it, 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 it's, it's for Radcar. Huh? Tushuk. 
What is? What's my name? Would you just get a grip, Veruca? There, there's a lot of work to be done here. Fucking hell. But, but I want to live in a world where, where I'm free, <laughs> away from this dusty old attic. Just like, shut your mouth and play with your tie trains like a good boy. You, you promised me a real train. I promised a lot of things to a lot of people, Veruca, and they're not getting them either. Now get back into your playpen. Filthy Phil will have to look after you. Oh, no. I didn't hate your Liga. Young Leo, what's in this dirty old bag over here? Yeah. <laughs> See what's in it here. I was using it as, as a mattress, Michael. Yes. It's the size oh, of it. Let me, let me have a look at it here. Oh, yeah, yeah. Quickly see what's in it. <gasps> my oh, God. Oh, my God. Holy God. sweet. Oh, yeah. Fanula. There must be... The size uh, of it. Must be at least uh, 3.6 oh. billion euro in here. Uh, I could build a, a toy metro and a toy <laughs> dart interconnector with that kind of money. If Group and Fuhrer Merkel found out we were hiding money up here instead of cutting our budgets, we'd all be for the firing squad. But nobody thought this money was here at all. It's no. as if it's been conjured up by magic. Yeah. <laughs> magic. Where do you think you're working, Moan? Anglo-Irish bank... <laughs> Is there anybody up there? No. Open this door. She's found us. She's at the shop door. Taysha. Would you ever shut your own trap, Moan? And where's Gilbor when you need him? He's over there digging. What? Tarnish the, tarnish the, what the hell are you doing over there? I'm digging a tunnel to the Auris. What? If Michael Tree can use that escape route, then maybe the rest of us can too. Fake! There's no time! Oh, They're here! Oh no! Oh, Frau Merkel! Hello, oh. hello, hello. What have we here then, Damon? Uh, here you are. There's that 760 million euro Shani Fitz owed you. And the uh, 3.6 billion we just found here in the attic. This is good. Oh well, Frau. Ah, yeah. It's like this. Huh? As they say in my part of the country. If you're on the pitch, you stay there and concede all the goals. And the pints as well. More cuts, more cuts, no. schnell. Please. And what have we here? Oh. Who is this little boy hiding in the corner? Who, me? Take him away. She wants you, Veruca. You have to go. No, no, I'm too young to die. Oh. Resistance is useless. Oh. Don't take me from my attic. Stop <laughs> schnivelling, schnell, schnell. Thanks for the fake he's gone, lads. <laughs> Has anyone got a tin of lilt? No. I need a stiff drink after this. John and Edward Grimes are trying to find Azerbaijan on a map. They're representing Ireland on the Eurovision junket again next year. No other country would be drunk enough to train pineapples to sing. Okay. Guys. 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 Okay. 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 Five. Listen, we've got some good news and bad news for oh you. Oh my god, god. deadly. Okay. Just, incredible. I'm so excited. Just, okay. just, I could like Come on. explode. Totes excited. We're going to be in Eurovision <gasps> again. Louis, oh my god, this is the best news ever. I, I can't breathe. Five. I can't breathe. Oh my god. Okay. This is the most exciting day ever. Like yeah, since okay. yesterday. I Holy. just got off the phone to Paul G and Derek Mooney. Oh my god. And they've confirmed you're going to be representing us again. Awesome. It's the biggest joke. Junket of the year. Crazy, I love junkets. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute, what's the bad news? Oh, yeah. Um, Tell us. It's only gonna be one of you. What? What? One? What do you mean? Louie. Which one of us? It's Edward. Oh, wow. <laughs> John But what am I gonna do Louis? Don't worry John You can have like a solo career Like me only Only uh, what Edward Only like We were like Jedward Yeah And I'm like Edward Yeah So you're just You're Ja No I'm John No if you're John We would've been like called John Edward okay No We were Jedward So you're just Ja No Louis yeah. tell him I'm John okay No no It's just Ja what? It's in the contract no. You didn't read the contract It's not my fault But Louis I, ha I have no future I'm gonna <laughs> form a band With a name like Ja I'm sorry Maybe I should go and see my friend What? Hold on a second What friend? What? There was no friend in the contract I thought I was his only friend I have another friend I'm gonna <laughs> call her now Who's he calling? I I've never heard of another friend Hi what? Unkit. Unkit. It's Ja here. <laughs> Junkit. Remember I said I was going to give you a call. Wait a second. You will? <laughs> cool. <laughs> this isn't in the contract. Oh my god. I just found out Eurovision's in Azerbaijan's <laughs> next year. Quickly, sign the contract. High five. Radio star Derek Mooney loves opening a can of worms. And you're very welcome back to Mooney. As usual, Aina Nilauna is with me today Hi, to talk about all things nature. Yes, Derek, and today I want to talk about worms, and not the kind that you get growing in your intestines and all the dirty little lads. These are the nice little fellas, the proper worms. Fantastic. You'd lovely little worms, garden worms, and how to make lovely pets. You're kidding, right? No, I'm not, Derek. Now, look at me, Bill, there. He's a lovely <sighs> little fella. This is Bill the Worm from Stilorgan. Why is he called Bill? Short for Willie. He's, he's Willie the Worm. You know, a lovely little fella. And your worms live long, Aina? Ah, generally not more than a week or two, Derek, and then yeah. they end up 
that some magpies lunch or something, and which I do be heartbroken about. Right. But you can always cut some worms in two of the scissors, and then you get two worms. Really? And you can't do that with a dog or a cat, as far as I know. Although I'd mm. love to try it. I, I don't know. You're the expert, but I can't imagine taking a worm out for a walk. Huh. Anyway, thank you very much, Aina. Okay, and there. now it's time for Mooney's money. And um, we have to go to the phones really quickly. Um, who's on the line? Uh, it's Michael here from Limerick. Okay, uh, how are things in Limerick, Michael? Well, I'm actually working in Dublin. Now. Okay, well, today's question was five and five makes ten. Is it true or false? Um, Vic, I told you the questions would be too hard, Baldy. Just have a guess or something. Wish up then. I'm trying to think here. I'm going to have to push you for an answer, Michael. Uh, 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 Come on. I'd say it's, well, uh, true. Come on. Uh, you <laughs> won 1,000 uh, euro oh, right. of <laughs> Mooney's money. Thanks a lot, That'll help out a bit. Uh. Oh, God. Does your man O'Connor give away a few bob tonight as well? And okay. And um, that's it for today's show. We're handing over now to Ireland's number one drive time show. Bye! <sighs> I don't know. I seem to be the last sane person in this bloody place. Sorry for swearing. No, Ballygowan, you're wrong. I think you'll find Ireland's official water is actually rain. Ah, but the winking weatherman, Jerry Fleming, is back. Hello there, and good afternoon. This is Jerry Fleming here. You might have missed me on the television lately. That's because I'm now head of the Met Aaron Forecasting Division. Yes, it's been me who's been actually getting all the weather forecasts wrong, so my apologies there. So here's the actual weather for the next week ahead or so. Uh, Greece, you will have to get your weather back when you pay your bills. Now, there you have it. Ha. And remember, you know the weather's good when you look outside and there isn't a ginger inside. All right, Jean? I'd say we got away with that forecast. Suitably nondescript. Ha. Okay, Jerry. Now take my dress off you. It's far too short. It's under a fair bit of high pressure, all right. Stop winking at me, Jerry. Well, that's it for me. Bye-bye. They say the Greeks have a word for it. So do we. Unfortunately, we're not allowed to use it on national radio. So I'll have to settle for yasses. Apparently, that's Greek for goodbye, although it sounds like something else to me. They say one should beware of Greeks bearing gifts. At Green Tea, we just say, beware of the Greeks, full stop. Slow on August. Asses?